Good morning. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Off the Press, a program where we take a look at all the papers and bring you the headlines with the help of expert guests in the studio. My name is Felicity Eziwike. I'm joined by two gentlemen, Bolaha Olojede. Thank you very much for coming in. Good to be here. And of course, we have Ashiwaju Oke Abayomi. A pleasure yeah. to have you join Thank us. Thank you for having me. Okay, uh, let's get right on to it. We have the Vanguard newspaper. We'll start with a screamer that's here. Uh, Showaray, court summons justice minister, DSS boss. That's uh, on the front page. Malami, risky and removal. It's AGF says Falano. Uh, you see details on page five, boldly on the front page of the paper. Uh, just above the masthead of the Vanguard paper, you'll see you tired activities put further pressure on inflation rate. Uh, well, those business people, we have a businessman here as well to give us some insight on that. Um, a convicted ex-governor, Kalu, asked for bail on held grounds. That's another interesting one. And then just beside it, we have the $29.96 billion uh, loan bead. I can't sit and watch Buhari squander our children's future. That's uh, a one-time presidential, a former, he's been a presidential candidate more than once, Atiku Abubakar is speaking. If you want to find details of that, you will see it on page five of the paper. There are plenty of headlines here, but I just want us to get started because okay. time is never uh, your friend. We'll start with you, Ashwaji. Okay. Um, let's start with um, Shawabe, <clears throat> called someone's um, justice minister and um, DSS boss. Um, for me, I, I said it once that um, what our judges should do is to uh, one, probably possibly boycott courts, especially when it comes to cases of um, federal government. Do you know why? You can't continue to disobey our rulings. You can't continue, continue to disobey our, our, uh, you know, our uh, verdicts, and um, you expect that we should always come to court again and sit. Sit to do what? By the time we say, let's do this, you will say, no, you don't. we just want to do yours, and you always find an alibi to, you know, to hide uh, behind. So for me, I just feel that um, court should, one, I don't know. I, I, I well, guess, will two wrongs make something right that is their constitutional responsibility if they if they uh, move away from, can they find other mechanisms to what compel what can they now do what can they do to compel federal government to obey the court rules okay if federal government is not obeying the court rules, then in their own case so it is possibly not all cases now cases that probably um federal government has, has to be to. Uh, a, prose a prosecutor in the in the in, in such cases then they should just possibly you know um avoid such cases and say go and um abide with the ones that we've actually given I, I, I've had this thought before, just before you move on to any mm. other headline, could you, do you think this might just work to compel the federal government to uh, pay more attention to cases? Um, I, I have a slightly different view, okay. uh, which is to say, we're not past um, a, a, a situation in which we can actually discuss this matters. Obviously, the way the federal government is going, it's not the right way to go. And I'm sure there must be one or two people who can still look at them in the face and advise them and tell them that this is not the right way to go. And therefore, the parties can discuss on. It's absolutely unacceptable not to obey court rulings. But I hear him loud and clear. Here is it. It's just for the judges to make the pronouncement. Unfortunately, the power to execute that pronouncement rests with the executive. So if the people who are meant to execute refuse to execute, then you're going to get frustrated. So you might say, oh, let's have some civil disobedience from, from on, on, on the part of the judiciary. But no, there are elders in this land. There are judges. There are old judges. Mm. Uh, there are current judges who can still sit down, put in everybody, including the attorney general, and, you know, and say, this is how we do this thing. It's not going to work in this direction that we're going. If it still doesn't work, then they might consider something like that, a civil disobedience, um, ab just abandoning the courts. Okay, um, I had a guest earlier in the news talk okay. about the mention in passing, the situation with uh, the ex-governor talking about corruption fight and all of that. Okay. Now, the ex-governor, Kalu, is asking for bail on held grounds, and people are saying there is every possibility that he's going to get that. He's you entitled. Know, what is your take? What is your take? He said he's entitled, but morally, I just feel that um, sometimes we appear as if we don't have conscience in this part of the world. Um, your actions or inactions, as the case may be, especially the corrupt, um, the ones who have been um, convicted now, has made some people lose their life, has made some people um, find themselves uh, with deteriorating health because money that is meant to be spent on um, 
our hospitals have been squandered by some of you. And now, when you are supposed to face the music, you are coming up to give an excuse that um, you have health issues to attend to. Interestingly, I think one of the papers even said he, he's talking about um, traditional medicine. Yeah, not even uh, Mortodos, and not even the, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> he's not talking about a doctor now, he's talking about bring, give me my abu as the case may be. No, it, it, uh, for me, I think it's just shameful, kind of. It's, it appears we don't have conscience. Why should we be talking about it? Why is it that anytime they are facing um, criminal charges, that is when they will come up with um, cases of <laughs> health <laughs> issues <laughs> and all that, as if we are not also sick and tired of your own actions that has led the country to this current state that we're in. Okay, uh, there are other headlines here. I'll just um, capture a few of them so yeah. you um, decide which one you want to take before we move on to the next paper. Nigeria pushing to make Oshun Oshobo a sacred groove world heritage site. That's um, a culture Is it minister. Not a world heritage site. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This it is, is a world heritage site. They should just go ahead and do what they would need so, to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's an attempt to uh, want to draw some tourism income. Oh, you know, get people to visit. But tourism is not, a, it doesn't work in a silo of its own. There are a lot of things that are intricately interwoven with tourism for it to work. Primary security. People must feel secure to come to where you want them to come to. So there are still elements of insecurity, pockets of insecurity around the country. So we need to fix all of that. Make the roads more terrible. Nobody wants to be flying from Oyo State mm. to Oshobu. <laughs> you know, because there are no bad spots on in the air. Uh, uh, you know, but on the road, the road they needs have to, to be, be fixed. Terrible. So a few other things. Yeah. Okay, um, do mm -hmm. the Vanguard is putting it in a small corner just below the picture, but they did celebrate um, uh, the president uh, with uh, the uh, picture on the front page, uh, mm -hmm. celebrating Buhari at seventy-seven. And the uh, story here is birthday Buhari, example of incorruptible leadership. Uh, that's it. There you find it on page 8 of the paper, the APC governors uh, matching promises of free fair polls with action, PDP tells Buhari as he turns uh, 77. Uh, but the good thing from all of this is that uh, he seems extremely happy that he passed the um, operation bill into law uh, on his birthday and they have now gone back to the cycle January, December. I, I want to get your thoughts on that quickly. I, I, okay, let me... Okay, let me one, it's historic that... Um, Yes, we are moving back to the January, December, you know, um, timeline for budget, and also the fact that um, uh, the president signed it on his birthday, seventh seventh birthday, and according to him, he said he's still very agile and uh, he's not using crutches uh, like uh, his other colleagues. But um, for us, um, it's not just about um, you know signing the bill into law; it's about the composition of the bill. Um, you cannot assign thirty-seven billion naira for innovation of a national assembly complex and um, you happily sign such. We are not happy with such. Why would, why would we want to spend 37 billion naira? Take for example, that 37 billion naira, if by Ogun standard, I'm from Ogun state, and I remember there was a time um, the governor said one billion naira for one kilometer of road with um, all the um, drainage, uh, drainage and, and uh, you know, the street light and everything. So that simply means that 37 billion naira can actually take care of 37 kilometer of road. Lagos Abelkuta Expressway for example, because we apply that road almost every day and it's, a sorry, it's in a sorry state. 37 billion naira can you know, solve that. Even when you are not operating from a very conducive office, the fact that the people you are representing, they are happy with you, you too will be happy in which, whichever office you are. And for me, I don't think that complex to serve um, such a bogus amount for renovation. So these are some of the issues. Your quick input on that. Fantastic to be able to get back in line, but we've not had this since this Third Republic. That's 20 years, 1999 to date. Um, it has a way of affecting the performance of the budget itself. So we will also be watching out, will the performance improve? Because we are starting early. Yeah. Let's, let's give see it the benefit of the and see what happens. Yeah. All right, it's still on the front page of the Nation newspaper, which is Nest for Review this morning, a picture of the president and uh, his uh, cabinet uh, looking on interestedly as he signs uh, the bill into law. Uh, many ministers there, the vice president is also there. Uh, Buhari to ask parents, don't use my name for 2023 uh, bead election. <laughs> on the top of the paper, we have um, the story on Kalusikin uh, bill to see uh, uh, the nation is saying habilists 
uh, how true that is, we don't know, but that's what the paper is saying. In quotes, um, Kalu six bill to see happen is the Shawaris case is also captured. Uh, reps reject six year uh, single term for president. I want to take you up on that, Balahan. Six yes, year sir. term, hmm. would that be a good idea, really, considering, first off, the humongous amount we spend on elections every four years, if we split that and make it a six-year term, you do your thing, you know you don't have a comeback, you do your thing, you and either you perform or... Yeah, isn't it a great idea? Why do you think the House just threw it out? We are dissipating energy in the wrong direction. Our problem is not tenor, it's not system of government, our problem is much deeper, and those are the things we need to face. And what are that these problems? Um, before I go to that, <laughs> do you know? Do you do you know that even democracy, it's not what guarantees the well-being of the people or the prosperity of the nation. You can mention. I'm sure you can mention two or three nations that are don't have democracy. China, it's not democracy. Though it has a semblance of, you know. Rwanda that we all talk about is not exactly a democracy. It looks like a democracy, but it's dictatorial. Singapore, the K the Lian Yu mm -hmm. or wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a democrat. But those nations prospered. So our problem has nothing to do with the system. There are countries that are presidential system or government are doing well, parliamentary are doing well, dictatorship are doing well. So he has nothing. So to you do with you that. you side you're siding with the reps. I'm on siding. This let's one. focus okay. on the real issues. And, <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Karen Dolu, deputy, split over 2020 governorship race. Reconciliation efforts fail. Uh, we also have um, some other stories on the back page. Uh, you might want to. Though this one is more of thought uh, from uh, Ni. Uh, he's thinking about tomorrow, and the caption of today's piece is "Mind your tires and your speed." Mm. Behind the headlines, open forum is also on the next newspaper you can go catch up more of that we do need time to get on to other papers this morning so we'll just move on to this day newspaper um uh, this day newspaper or should we go with the guardian first anyone <laughs> all right let's go to the guardian newspaper article once against borrowing as buhari signs 10.59 4 trillion hour budget. That's on the front page. That's it for you That's on the screen. Thing. And then uh, we also have a couple of writers um, to that. Uh, we'll deliver promises to Nigeria. President vows. Okay. Other headlines on The Guardian this morning. You have a Senate opposed opposes kickoff of visa-free policy, probes closure of Nigerian businesses in Ghana. Uh, we also have Mandela should inspire African leaders to be selfless, says Buhari. Address allegation of not dominance in cabinet, Cheo Sani tells president. All right, uh, just been at that very uh, big picture on the front page. You have reps reject six year uh, single tenor for president, uh, governors, others. Uh, seven killed in Ogun. Para road crashes. Um, there are other headlines here, but I, I, I want to take you, Ashwin, I want to okay. take you on. On Senate um, opposes kickoff of visa free policy, probes closure of Nigerian businesses in Ghana. What's your take on that? Okay. Um, President made the announcement um, without uh, recourse to the National Assembly that, um, yes, it's going to be visa on arrival. Now, thank God the Senate realized that, um, one, they got the President ought to have um, consulted them. There should be um, a clearance from the National Assembly before you would um, go ahead to, you know, make such a pronouncement. Now they are calling the uh, minister, that's uh, Minister Baru Farag Beshola mm -hmm. and the NIS um, boss to, is the NIS now, Nigerian Immigration Service, yes, to come and, um, you know, defend and explain to the National Assembly, explain to the people, because indirectly you are explaining to us, because those are our representatives, because um, if you are to make or if you are even to sign any treaty, International Treaty, African Treaty, as the case may be, there mu we must be in the know, we must understand why this would benefit us. So I think that's exactly what is playing out here. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's go to this day newspaper. Um, our business leaders are a bit about better economy as Buhari signs 2020 a birthday budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> birthday budget. Everybody's talking about it. I think the budget is for his birthday. <laughs> I, know, uh, I guess it was quite strategic that they brought it on his birthday. On his birthday, yeah. or maybe coincidental, mm -hmm. who knows? But that's uh, what this day is going with this morning. A couple 
of Riders, President of British Patients Patriotism at 77, pledges free fair credible 2023 polls. APC governors, Bajabia Mila, Tinubu, Greek celebrant. Well, we celebrate your president as well. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> at the very top of the paper, Emefile Six governors, government's intervention to serve a $500 million from palm oil imports. CBN commits uh, 69 billion naira to add the oil palm sector. Analysts seek support for farmers as inflation inches up uh, to 11.85%. Uh, signing of budget is also there, the picture for you. Uh, just beside it, we have House shoots down six year single term for president governors uh, at Tiku. Uh, faults lawmakers' decision. Uh, those are some of the headlines on the front page of this day newspaper. On the back of it, we have uh, not all major generals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely uh, write-up. Huh? You've read it? I read it. Yeah, I read I, it. I define elucidations uh, by OK E.K. Chiku. You might want to go read it as well. OK, your thoughts this okay. morning. On, on, the, um, on the budget thing, mm -hmm. uh, there are two sides to that issue mainly. Uh, number one is the fact that we have a serious revenue problem. The entire budget in itself is nothing to write home about. The entire figure, mm -hmm. 10.594. Um, I'm sure it's not up to the, to the education budget of South Africa, the entire thing. You know, so that is to tell you how minuscule what we're talking about is. It cannot take us anywhere on one side. So it means that for us as a nation, we have to get strategic, put on our thinking cap, and rev up the revenue of this nation. We have a huge asset base, call it GDP in this particular case. But we're not sweating that GDP. We're not productive as a nation. So the revenue is horrible. On the other side of the coin is the fact that the little revenue, this tiny revenue that we now have, a lot of it gets frittered away, wasted, or lost to corruption and inappropriate application. So we still have a lot to do we with uh, our budget. A budgets. whole lot to but do. Is, uh, <laughs> for now, it's, it's but okay. But at least we've accomplished something in your we'll estimation. We've accomplished something. I, I, I have cycle. Right now, <laughs> so you know. well, that's a good thing. But, uh, All right. I still want to take you on, on MFL seeking uh, um, Gov's intervention to save uh, uh, money. That's it's, part of trying to it's not part of that our revenue our thing. Revenue. Because now the governors must sit up and help to drive creation of wealth. We must have revenues coming up. See, when you have your state going to Abuja every month to go and beg, some of these states rely on Abuja for over 90% of their revenue. And you need to ask them, what exactly are they doing? Every state has something they can make money from. All they just need to do is to be sincere with themselves and you know, look into this and derive the revenue from it. It's not just about taxation. Everything should, shouldn't be about taxation and it shouldn't be about borrowing as well, just like Atiku said. All right, uh, we will do the Punch newspaper now. Uh, the Punch has scores of ASU members face bleak Christmas over IPPIS, uh, FG is university's workers' employer, says UNN. Uh, no pay, no work, you bad varsity lecturers tell federal government. Uh, the punch is going with completely different uh, headline mm -hmm. um, this morning. Uh, we also have uh, a picture of Lagos here uh, with the caption, a Lagos Metro Rail will become operational in 2021. That's the governor of Lagos State speaking. Details on page six of the paper. Court jails BPE boss 30 days for contempt. Um, there is something on Senate summons Eric Beshola over visa and arrival policy. Uh, the six-year term story is also captured here. FIRS to begin clamp down on tax defaulters. How, how will that happen, really? FIRS to uh, begin clamp down on tax defaulters. Mm. How, in your opinion, uh, can they actually do that effectively, considering um, we, <laughs> we don't have accurate data of people in this country. Now, these are some of the issues. You, you talked about accurate data, and um, we, we still run a government, um, uh, an analog government, kind of, you understand? Until we begin to run um, e-governance, kind of, you know, that's when we can achieve a lot that we want to achieve. Now, major companies, major, uh, let me say, even multinationals are invading tax. And yet, um, a common man like me, permit me to use that, uh, will be forced to say, okay, come and cough out something big from 
the mega uh, you know amount that I'm making. So let um, federal government be sincere with their approach. Let them take, you, you can engage smart people using technology to drive the system. Of course, they've given a seven-day ultimatum earlier before today, and they said, to, starting from today, you'll see them going around. So you know, sometimes that thing is, you know, it's just like wasting energy. You're going around. It's a, you can detect those who are default, so we default as, technology. with technology and then send mail to them. And, uh, you know, it's as simple as that. Your take on the big, uh, big one here, ASU members facing bleak Christmas. Yes, uh, they've been on this for a while. I, I, I really don't know why ASU don't want to comply with um, the IPPIS arrangement. Uh, I don't know if you recall that time. Recent time we had that, and we have so many fake um, professors. Yes. In um, you know in our universities now, we are also aware kind of that um, we have some lecturers who are not supposed to be lecturers in the first place, or probably ghost lecturers, as the case may be. Now IPPIS is meant to correct some of these things. They've brought it to some universities. Enter your details on the system. Reg more like regularization. Confirm that okay, this is you. Um, you know, do all the thumb printing thing and everything, and then get your pay. But I don't know why ASU is having this issue with Federal Government saying they don't want IPPIS arrangement. They want another one, this and that. But now Federal Government is threatening them. If no you don't work, comply, no you won't get paid. And they are saying no, no pay, no, no pay, pay, no work. No work. No work. No. At the end of the day, it's going to fall on the common man. Our students will have to spend more than. The, um, the normal number of years they're supposed to spend in schools just because their lecturers are having uh, uh, issues with their with employer. With government employers. Mm -hmm. Okay, your take on this for oh, wrap-up. It's, it's quite <laughs> unfortunate because we, might, we, are, we seem to be heading in the direction of another industrial action mm. uh, if this is not properly resolved. Uh, resolved. The truth is that the university system it's not isolated from the larger society. So if in the federal civil service you have ghost workers, in the state you have ghost workers, and local government, even in the private sectors. Mm. So why will the, uh, uh, we also think that they are shielded from certain, there are ghost workers in the university system. I can say it without missing what There has to be, because they are not uh, an island to themselves. Mm. Therefore, they must be willing, if this is what the system helps them to do, to fish out these ghost workers, why the resistance? Excuse me, I'm afraid that's where we are going to have to draw a certain for today. There are some other headlines here I would love to take you up on. But I'll urge you to go find um, your vendor, take a copy, or go online and read some of those story. You could look on the uh, punch, you will see anti-graft war democracy, too slow for my liking. Buhari is speaking. You need to go find out why he's saying that. And maybe your thought processes could ginger some strong conversations. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you to my guest for coming uh, on the program this morning. Thank you for Pleasure having to have you. Us. Good to be here. All right. Go have a productive day. But don't forget to keep watching Plus TV Africa.